This video is the solution to the example problem in kinematics where I have a, an object undergoing several accelerations. I refer to this as a segmented problem because of all the different accelerations and the segments on the graph. To begin with, I have a car traveling at 5 meters per second when it speeds up at 3 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. The car then travels at a constant velocity for 100 meters, after which time it slows down with a deceleration of 2 meters per second squared for 15 meters. What is the car's velocity at the end of the trip? So when I look at unit and phrase clues, I can see I've got 5 meters per second, 3 meters per second squared, and it does this for 4 seconds. So there's the acceleration, one acceleration at 3 meters per second squared. The car then travels at a constant velocity, that means acceleration is equal to 0, for 100 meters, after which time it slows down with a deceleration of 2 meters per second squared for 15 meters. And finally, what's the car's velocity at the end of the trip, in other words, the end of all this motion? Well, when I'm looking at this, I can see a couple things. What makes this problem unusual is I have one object moving with several accelerations, the 3 meters per second squared, the fact that it then moves at a constant velocity, so that breaks it up into a second segment, and it then after that breaks up into a third segment at 2 meters per second squared, and that's a deceleration, so that'll be negative. Because it has three accelerations, it'll have three segments. Remember our rule, every acceleration gets its own list of givens. So I've got three accelerations, three list of givens. First, all the red ones, all the thing, everything that's underlined in red, those are the givens for the first segment. Everything that's underlined in blue, those are the givens for the second segment. Everything in purple, that's the third second segment. And finally, I'm looking for the velocity at the very end. Well, if I'm looking at the third segment, I'm trying to find this final velocity. It'd be helpful if I had the time. Hmm, can't get it there. Or the initial velocity for the segment. And the cool thing is, I know that in a problem like this, where everything links up one segment after another, the final velocity for one segment becomes initial velocity for the next segment. In other words, the final velocity for the second segment becomes the initial velocity for the third segment. So that means I've got to find the final velocity for the second segment. Well, I've got kind of a problem here. But what I also know is I can do the same thing between the first and the second. So the final velocity for the first segment becomes the initial velocity for the second segment and I can find the final velocity for the first segment. So if I look at that, I've got V naught A and T, and I'm looking for the initial, or the final velocity here. So that similarly, that means I gotta do the uh, VOAD formula, V equals V naught plus AT. Plugging in all the numbers from above the formula, that is everything from the first segment, I get 17 meters per second. And I know that the final velocity for the first segment becomes the initial velocity for the second segment. That's great. Now that I have this piece, I know that it moves at a constant velocity, which means there's no change in velocity, so the 17 meters per second is also the final velocity for the second segment. So, the final velocity for the second segment becomes the initial velocity for the third segment. Now I have enough givens in the third segment to find the final velocity for that, which is the final velocity at the end of the entire trip. So I'm using the v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax formula. And let's see, move on from here. Plug in the givens from all above. Notice that the acceleration is negative because it's decelerating. And then when I do the math, I get 15. It's like 15.1 something or other, but um, with two sig figs, I get 15 meters per second. And this is what the paper would look like. So you can see how it lays out, and I've got little explanations above each formula about what's going on. And notice too that it's, everything's lined up in columns. Three accelerations, three columns. Every acceleration gets its own column. And you can also tell the way the columns are lined up that the givens above are put into the formula right below in that column. The same thing's true on the left hand, or sorry, the right hand side. The givens above are put right into the formula down below. And so everything's organized nice and orderly. And it might be that on your paper, you might have to turn the paper sideways. But on this one, I got it all to fit on the page. And in fact, my page looks something like this. So it took up almost half a sheet of paper to get this done.